Hey, this is Seth with Indie Man Career. I show people how to get life-changing jobs in digital marketing with no previous experience or education. And that includes my very special guest today, Roberto, who I actually interviewed back in 2018, where he went from being a warehouse worker to making 55K at a digital marketing agency. And since then, he has grown to making 85K at his new job and has had a lot of things happen. And I want to, I'm excited to share with you the journey of how he, you know, went from working in a warehouse to where he is today. So thank you for being here, Roberto. Thank you for having me, Seth. My pleasure. So today you are a successful digital marketer, but let's take people back to the beginning. And, um, you know, because it's been a while since we spoke, um, 2018, what was going on? What was going on in your life before you found Digital Marketing Course? Yeah, for sure. So like you said, I was working at a warehouse. Um, I was pretty miserable. I wasn't happy, right? Um, I didn't have like a sense of direction in my life. I was like, what am I going to do with myself? Uh, no college degree, no specific skills. Um, so I was lost. So one day, you know, I you know, when I went to college, I wanted to become a mecha mechanical engineer. So naturally, um, I looked for YouTube channels on YouTube and, you know, knowing Matt, uh, who promoted your course back then, uh, presented, you know, your course. So I was intrigued. I was like, well, what's digital marketing? I was like, that's interesting. Never heard of that before. So I, you know, you made the claim that make zero to 60, you know, in a year, I was like, okay, <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see what this guy's all about. So I took a look at your course, liked it. Um, I was intrigued. So I decided to take a leap of faith and, and take your course. You know, I had faith, you know, I had faith and I still have a lot of faith in your course, obviously, because it got to, it got me where I'm at today. Um, but studying my butt off, right. Generating my own experience. And then I presented that to my first employer um, and they liked it, right. They loved that. I took initiative and they decided to bring me on board. So at my first gig, I was making around $16, $16.50 an hour. Not that much. Granted, I was still a beginner, right? I was a novice. The important, the important thing is to get your foot in the door. That's the most important part because once you get your foot in the door, the rest is history. You're good. You're going to grow no matter what. And then after that, I decided to join an agency. This was, you know, 2019 now. And I started making 55K a year. And for me, that's a lot of money you know, from someone working at a warehouse, making $12 an hour to making 55K, I was happy. I was very content. I'm like, wow, I didn't expect to make this much money in such a short amount of time. So I was there for about seven months. And then unfortunately, my fiance, she acquired a brain injury. So I had to put my life in pause. So I was out for the rest of 2019. This happened around July, August. She recovered, you know, thankfully, and I decided to go back into the workforce. So I had this big gap in my resume, me thinking that was going to be an issue, but in reality, it wasn't. So yeah. in 2020, so, let me speak to that. And mm -hmm. uh, obviously there's more to come with the pandemic. That's a really, uh, first of all, and we spoke about this. I might even put in a clip from your first interview because you're really emotional and, and, and it was awesome <laughs> to see you so happy when we first spoke, you know, going from working at the warehouse to getting these skills, to getting an entry level position to get some experience, then 55K, which is just the beginning. Um, and then you just shared with me, this is a big deal for people, especially these mm -hmm. days, the idea that you could leave the job because you had a personal family situation. And not have to worry. You, didn't, you maybe didn't even know you didn't have to worry at the time. You didn't have to worry about re-entering the field. And that's exactly. one of the great benefits of this skill set. In addition to the the pay and the job itself and all these, you know, the need for workers is that because there's such a need, you don't have to be stuck at your job, like terrified that if you have to take time off, you're never going to get it back in. In fact, I had a student recently talk to me about how she actually was making a lot of money, been at a company for a while. And she just realized mm -hmm. it was time. She needed a time like for mental health and she just left. And I'm like, you know, I was like, that's great. You're, yeah. You can get another job like that yeah. the next time exactly. you want one. So uh, 2019, you're making 55 K. Um, you have to take time out to take care of your fiance. Thankfully she is, she is better. Mm -hmm. And then 
let's resume the story. So it's around 2020 and what's going on. So yeah, January, 2020, I got a job. Um, literally the first couple of jobs that I applied, I, you know, I, I got a job, to, you know, super quick. Like I said, you know, once you have these skills and, you know, you're confident in these skills, you present those skills to your potential employer, they're going to bring you in, especially if you share that passion for the industry. You know, that's, that's, that's another huge thing. Like whenever you go into like interviews, you know, show your passion for this industry. It's going to help out a lot. They love that. They want someone that takes initiative, someone who has motivation, drive, who's hungry. So make sure you present that passion whenever you're interviewing with a potential employer. So 2020, right? Um, I was making around the same, honestly, just to be completely transparent. I was still making 55K. Um, and that was okay with me because this agency, um, what you know, is one of the top digital marketing agencies here in San Diego. So it was more for the learning experience. So for me, that was that was good enough. So fast forward till April, depend or towards March, towards the end of March, the pandemic hit. And unfortunately, since I was pretty new, I just got onboarded, right? Due to budgetary reasons, they had to let me go, unfortunately. So I was like, great. <laughs> you know, um, it is what it is. It's business. I completely understand. So for the rest of the year, you know, I just decided to take time to myself, right? Because I was a little apprehensive. I was like, what's going to happen with this whole COVID thing? What if I decide to, you know, get another job and it just gets worse and they lay off people, you know, again. So it was a very tough time. But luckily, there was a lot of jobs, uh, you know, a lot of digital marketing jobs during that time. Um, I was just very cautious. Um, but fast forward to 2020, to, towards the end of 2020, um, I, this, this is where I joined the current company I'm in right now. And this is where I'm making, you know, around 65K. So it's a great company. But personally, um, they do more B2B. Um, and I want to do more e-commerce. So when this opportunity, right, because I just got onboarded into a new job, I'm going to start on the 12th of July, which I'm extremely excited. You know, I, I just couldn't pass up the opportunity. I was like, this is it. This is the company I want to grow. I want to grow in. And they have a lot of resources, a lot of support. They have a big team. They're doing big things. They're working with big brands. And that's what I want, you know, as a, you know, in my career for me to just grow continuously. So I'm very content where I'm at right now, despite all the challenges that I went through the past two years, you know, I'm back on track Yeah, and making really good money. I'm um, working for a really good company. And I'm just like, wow, it's like, it's been rough. Like at the beginning, it was exciting. And then I went through some obstacles, but now, you know, it's like you have your ups and downs right now. I'm going to go up again. So, yeah. Well, when you say, and when you say obstacles, it sounds like it was more of like your personal, personal life. stuff. Exactly. Not, you know, life happens, you know, some, yeah. some people, you know, life is smooth, but some people life is a little rough. Life is life. You know, things happen um, that just is out of your control. Right. Uh, unfortunately for me, the, these, fa these, you know, factors were just out of my control. I couldn't really do anything about it. I mean, I couldn't really predict COVID or, you know, my fiance acquiring a brain injury. Um, you know, but now, you know, despite all that and, you know, those gaps on my resume, you know, my, you know, they, they look, you know, past that and they don't judge you based on that. Right. You know, because, you know, you have it the skills. Like, the skills. Yeah. It sounds like, I mean, the, the skill set and the jobs were the stability that provided you, you know, some comfort in the while you were dealing with these things and yeah. even COVID, as you mentioned as i mentioned last year you know there were there were there was a drop in digital marketing jobs in march mm -hmm. <laughs> but it kept going back up yeah uh, yeah and it, so it just if you were it keeps going up right now like yeah there's a bunch of jobs it's double what it's ever been there's you know exactly before covid i think the most it ever was was like sixty thousand a, a day now it's around wow. 95,000 a day. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, everybody's but, jumping on board, man. Like all these brands, like they're realizing the potential of digital marketing. Like this is the future. Like right. I, I'm, I'm, you know, your students right now, like, you know, it's, it, it's a good time to jump on board. Right. But this is going to be a skill that's going to be always, need, that's going to be needed. Right. Yeah. Um, 
So this is the future of marketing, right? Digital, you know, everybody's on their phones, everybody's on the computers. So you guys are doing the right choice by, you know, joining, you know, Seth's course, or if you're not, if you haven't yet, I highly encourage you to do so. Um, it's, Why it's, don't it's, you? It's worth, it's worth. Thanks, man. And tell people, let's just two things I wanted to get to. Number one, just get, tell people a little bit more about how you got this job offer and what the job. Uh, um, and also, by the way, guys, B2B means business to business, which is something mm-hmm. Roberto said before. Um, mm-hmm. And there are companies that special. I mean, there's so many different avenues of digital marketing. There's business to business. B2C is business to consumer. That's where you're marketing mm-hmm. right to the consumer. B2B is more like companies advertising to other companies. Um, and then e-commerce, of course, we all know is like, you know, selling products yeah. like on yeah. you know Amazon or, or Shopify or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And so you worked at this, your current position in making 65K, which was a raise from your other job at 55K during the end of the pandemic. And mm-hmm. then you got offered this other position. Did, what, did a recruiter come after you? How did that happen? Were you looking? Yeah. Uh, so I wasn't really looking the opportunity kind of presented itself. So LinkedIn, it's a very powerful tool. Honestly, of all, out of all my jobs, I got them all through LinkedIn. It was some recruiter, you know, sending me a message and be like, Hey, are you interested? I'm like, yeah, sure. Let's, let's, let's take a look. Um, yeah. So it was a senior recruiter. So she was very impressed by my resume, by my experience. And I told her about everything, right. I'm, I like to be completely transparent about my experience, my, my resume gaps. Well, what happened? What's going on? What am I looking for in a company? All that stuff. And, you know, she, she loved it. Right. Um, and, you know, this company completely understood what I went through. It's like, you know, life happens and, you know, and I express my, my, my drive and passion for this industry. And they love that. They love that. Um, That's so uh... That's fantastic, man. And so, and so uh, just the nuts and bolts again. So they offered you, was it 70 base? Yeah. Yeah. 70 base plus commissions. So, you know, it depends on the, you know, the size, the budgets, the budgets of your clients, how much commissions you're going to get. So let's say around 80 to 90 um, around that range. Yeah. And that's fantastic, man. I love it when companies reward you for how much load of ad spend you are managing you know when i had a job that gave me bonuses based on my performance it it incentivizes you you feel respected and you know you don't feel like you're just working your butt off and the company's um getting all the profits so i'm excited for you i mean you know and you you know it it really does motivate you to to work harder because obviously you want to do better for these clients and get more Um, it really does yeah it really does and then they have like this roadmap you know, for your, for your career growth, you know, so that we, you know, continue to grow in your career. So they have like this in order for me to, you know, move on to the next level or, you know, for me to get promoted, I have to meet a certain criteria. Right. So they have that mapped out for you. So they want you to be successful. They want you to get there. They want you to be the best. So for me, that's like, that's perfect. Right. So they're giving me, you know, structure. Right. So it's it just, like you said, it in- incentivizes me to work harder, um, so I, I'm, said, I'm like, truly excited. They, they have like levels and like the next level is a management level, right? Where you're mm-hmm. going to be supervising other people. And exactly. I imagine it comes with a more pay and more responsibility and everything. Exactly. Yeah. That is actually really great. We haven't talked about that too much in too many interviews, but like, yeah, everybody, everybody I've interviewed, you know, you're starting out, you're obviously, everybody wants to keep growing and it's really mm-hmm. great if a company actually tells you this is where you can go. Exactly. <laughs> it's also so, to keep you at that company longer because if they don't tell you how you're going to grow and make more money and do you know yeah. you're going to go elsewhere like you did <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. exactly so i i see myself working for this company for 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 the long term right that's so, awesome man. yeah we'll, so, uh, and, mm-hmm. we'll follow up with you in a few uh in a year or so and i'm yeah definitely be. and one of the other questions i was going to ask you is you two for telling me, you said, like, you said, you think about the course and you wonder what you'd be doing right now if you didn't get these skills. I think about that every day, man. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, I, really about that. I, 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 I wake up every morning feeling grateful. I'm like, like, what would I be doing right now if I would have never stumbled upon that course, upon Seth's course? Like, would I still be working at the warehouse, making you know, $15 an hour. Right. So yeah, man, I'm just like, 
I'm so grateful. Like, honestly, like I, when I think about it, like I want to cry um, because I'm just like, yeah, I, it, it gets a little emotional um, because now, you know, I can, you know, in the future buy a house, right. Provide for my family, take care of my mom and dad, uh, my little sisters. Right. Um, I can do a, I can do a lot for them. Um, and it's because of your course, man. Like it's, it's very powerful and it literally changed my life for the better. So, I'm so happy to hear that, man. So thanks, man. I, Jesus Christ. Like, wow. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I remember, um, when we interviewed you, uh, with Matt, it was, you know, I was very present to that. And, um, I did want to ask you this. So I like to keep the interview obviously focused on digital marketing, but I, mm-hmm. I'll ask you this now. Maybe we'll keep it in, maybe not. But like, what did happen with your fiance and is she okay now? Yeah. So she had a brain tumor. Um, oh. She had a brain tumor. So she, so let's go back to 2019. Um, she was having really bad headaches, like severe headaches to the point where she was pretty much incapacitated. She couldn't do anything. Right. She would lay in bed all day, just in pain. So this one day she was just, it got so bad that, you know, it just, we had to go to the ER and they decided to do a CT scan and they found a tumor in her third ventricle. So deep down in her brain. Wow. And how old is she? She is 27. Oh, wow. So she's young. Right. Yeah. And so what happened is she had a bunch of brain fluid building up in her brain. So it's called hydrocephalus. Mm-hmm. And it was causing those intense headaches because of the tumor. So it was an obstructive tumor. So they had to take it out. And what happened is, you know, it was a very risky surgery because it's a, it's in a very, you know, sensitive yeah. area in the brain yeah. and it's deep down, like it's not accessible. Wow. So what happened is she had a stroke during surgery and, you know, there's a lot of complications. So she was paralyzed all on her left side. So, you know, her arm, she couldn't move anything on her left side. And then she had to do therapy. You know, she wasn't really fully aware who she was, where she was at. You know, she wasn't. Oh um, yeah. She wasn't. What, what's that word I'm looking for? Well, she like, she, she was just lost pretty much. And she had short-term memory. I'm talking about, you know, if we did something, like let's say, you know, we went to music, music therapy and they played a song we go back to her room and be like, do you remember what song they played? No, I don't. Wow. So it was that bad. Right. So as you can tell that this is why I had to leave my job. Right. Because I had to be there. Her family's in Texas. They eventually moved down here to help me take care of her. But at the time, you know, it was just me, you know, it was just me. Wow. Um, I mean, she needed me. Um, so I just, I had to leave my current job and so I can take care of her. But now, man, I mean, two years later, she just started working this month. I mean, last month. So she's working at, uh, she's working for a really great company. She's making really good money. Um, and she's, uh, she's, she has a supervisor position. So she do, she, she works, uh, for a company called Equus. Um, they pretty much house people who are pretty much homeless. Right. Wow. And they try to put them into section eight housing. Okay. So we have a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, uh, this homeless situation here in San Diego. It's getting pretty bad. So, you know, we try to help these, they try to help those people as much as possible and try to get, get them into housing. So right now they're staying in hotels right. um, and, you know, just supervising them and just catering to their needs, you know, whatever they need. Right. Um, but she's working for a really great cause. She's happy. You know, she's and back is, to she, is she back to normal now? So let's say, you know, once you have a brain injury, you're really, if it's severe enough, right. If it's pretty bad, you're never a hundred percent, but I'll say she's like 95%. You know, she, she's okay. a warrior. You know, she still has memory issues, but not as bad as it used to be. But she's still like her, her, she her moves her, like she, she's not paralyzed anymore, right? No, no, she's walking. She's walking 8,000 steps a day now. So, I mean, she, she's back to who she was. Granted, she's still, um, she's very sensitive to noise. Um, she still has memory issues, but it's getting better every single day on a day oh, okay. by day basis, you know, it's getting better. You, you can tell. And I'm, sometimes like her memory is better than mine. So I was like, oh, okay. that's, that's great. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember saying that. Like, How do you remember? If I don't remember, she's like, cause I remember. I'm like, that's great. I'm happy. <laughs> wow. But everything's copacetic now. I mean, everything's good. You know, um, 
I'm just happy. You know, it, it was a, it was an eye opening experience. Like I don't really take anything for granted anymore um, because life can change in an instant. So, you know, that experience, that ordeal was uh, eye opening. Now life, I just see it completely different, differently. Right. Um, so I don't take it for granted. Wow, man. That's, uh, that's deep. Um, yeah. When I do these interviews, you know, I obviously want to give people a sense of the person I'm interviewing. Yeah, you, you could put it on, you could put it on the, on the video if you want. I don't, I don't mind. We don't mind sharing our story. We, yeah. we, you know, we, we love to tell the story that we went through. Yeah. Because right? um, maybe there's people out there that are going through something similar and I, you know, just make them feel a little bit more, you know, there's someone out there that went through that as well. Right. Well, I think, uh, I'm not sure. Um, well, we'll see if I'm going to edit. Yeah, this. it's up to you. That, that's yeah. your call. My, for you, I, you have my full permission. I appreciate that. I, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't think we've had a story like that before because I normally, it's interesting. Maybe I'll put it in there. I do like, I mean, I like it. It's different and it's real and it's true and it's difficult. Um, I'll see how it looks when we cut it. I mean, I think um, that's interesting. I always like to keep everything very positive, but I think being real is more important. Um, yeah, yeah. And it does have that opinion. We, we touched on it on the broad strokes in um in uh in the the general conversation but um mm -hmm. it is good to know because people do deal with these types of things but i mean the, yeah. the important thing is that she's back you know she's doing well and um wow you guys you must really love her yeah <laughs> yeah i really do so we were planning on getting married i was going to propose to her that year when she got the brain injury right um but event you know that happened so now i have to so I proposed to her before, before surgery, and I know it's not the best time to do it, but I was like, you never know. You know, it's brain, right. it's brain surgery. You just, you never know. Right? right. But now I have to do it again. So I wish she could remember it because she doesn't remember anything. <laughs> right. Wow. So, but she remembers, does she have long-term memory? I mean, she remembers her, who she is and, and stuff. From yeah, 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 yeah. All that stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's mostly a short-term. Right. But long term, it's, it's, there. it's there. Well, that could be good because if you screw up or, you know, piss her off and then maybe she forgets about it. Dude, like, that's that's one advantage. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so like if I piss her off, like if I don't like she tells me to do something and I don't do it, you know, she gets mad at me. And then like five minutes later, she's like, oh, no, no, no. She, it's like she forgot about it. Dude, oh. it sounds like the solution <laughs> to like all sorts of relationship problems. I'm like, <laughs> yes get a brain injury like no but seriously have you ever been in a relationship or i haven't had too many long-term relationships but i have noticed like with people it's like dude if you could just let go of some stupid shit that happened five minutes ago you'd be so much exactly. happier Your relationship's gonna be a lot better yeah i, I mean, completely agree you don't want to erase you don't want to forget everything you don't want to forget stuff from you know long term but like yeah it's like <laughs> yeah but, like, i agree I watch like TV shows or sitcoms. It's always that's ah, one little thing. If they could just, there'd be no show. There'd be no drama. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, uh, well, good. I mean, it's really good to catch up with you, man. Let's, let's yeah. um, stay in touch and keep me posted on, you know, this job as you get into it. And um, For sure. is there anything you want to say to people watching the interview, people who are considering the course or in the course or any, any, anything you want to say at all? Yeah. If you're skeptical or hesitating, I, tell you right now just just do it right trust your gut trust me it's real um but it's up to you you know right to work hard and make this a reality for yourself um that's what i did anybody can do it honestly just take that leap of faith and trust me everything's gonna work out work itself out that's great man and that's what i've found with people you know it's like i mean you shared your story. I mean, it wasn't a smooth road, you know, it's not mm -hmm. like, Hey, I got my job and now everything in my life is perfect. But if you stay focused and committed and, you know, and even when you're starting out, you know, <laughs> like your first job interview, you're going to get the job. You have to stay committed. You have to keep at it. It could take, exactly. you two months. it could take you six months. You don't know, but exactly. it's, it's predictable exactly. and it's shorter than it takes. It's shorter and less expensive than a degree and more practical. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you, and so, and to, and, to, and to, before we end, um, you did mention you don't have a college degree and now you're going to be making around six figures as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
I love that. I love wow. that. Wow. <laughs> That's my like dream in life for people is that people skip college, skip all that headache, skip all the debt, skip the drama. Just get, just get to it. Don't deal with it and yeah. go on to be successful. Um no debt. Yeah. Yeah. So Awesome, Roberto. Thanks for sharing your story with us. Um, we'll stay in touch. We'll do a follow up and, uh, you know, good luck with everything. Sounds good, Seth. I appreciate it, man. Nice talking to you. You too.